Hello and welcome to the video walkthrough for my script article running Umbreco in a Docker container. Um, this walkthrough is in three different parts uh, which go along with the article, the link to which will be in the description, so please go along and have a read. The video isn't going to go into too much detail, there is a lot more detail in the article itself. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to please get in touch on social media and I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to start by cloning my repository. And then opening it in VS Code. Uh, and everything I do from here on is going to be done inside VS Code. Uh, I'm following the instructions in the article. Um, but that's also in the repository as well if you need it. Uh, I'm going to open a new terminal. Um, the other thing to make sure that's actually running is Docker Desktop. That itself needs to be running. If that isn't running, then uh, nothing can happen. But you can see I have no containers running and I don't have any local images over here. So it's a completely clean installation of Docker Desktop. So the first thing we're going to do in part one, we're going to start with a basic Umbraco website, just a clean website from scratch. So I'm going to go down to, in fact, let me do it from here. Um, I'm going to go down to the part one section, okay? Uh, and I'm going to, to Make sure the Umbraco templates are installed. 941 is the latest version. Um, I'm going to create a global JSON file. Uh, that's just to make sure that all the code in this project uses this version of the .NET SDK because I have multiple versions installed on this machine. And I'm going to create a solution file just for completeness. And I'm going to start a new Umbraco project using .NET New. Uh, importantly, this is going to use the local DB database, which will create a local file system database. Um, this will only work on Windows. If you're using Mac or Linux, there are specific instructions for Linux and Mac on the uh, repository, which is slightly different, uh, but you can still follow through. Uh, this will also create the admin user and password and get everything set up. So that will create a folder here called UMB doc. So UMB doc is going to be our website source folder. The next thing to do is to add that to our solution just for completeness. And I am now also going to install a template um, just so that we have something to look at when we run the site. It's just a basic Umbraco template done by the very excellent Paul Seal from codeshare.co.uk. So uh, please go check it out. Um, and the last thing to do, um, this will work fine in Windows, but if you try and run this application in Linux, uh, these packages aren't supported in Linux. So you've got to modify the CS proj um, and replace this section with this one from the notes. And that's it. Um, you'll notice I have auto save on my um, VS code uh, so that my changes are saved automatically so I don't explicitly need to save anything which is a super useful thing to do right I'm going to run my website now so oops down here in my terminal run the website make sure everything is working as expected and um, this will basically download all the NuGet packages it will create the database uh, and remember it's in local DB that it's creating so in that uh, instance it's under UMB doc under Umbraco under the data folder and there's our database uh, it's also finished starting up the site so I can see the site is running here so if I open up that in the browser hopefully I should be able to see um, our Umbraco site and yes here it is I click around and it should all work lovely Okay, so that is part one complete. So uh, in part two, we're going to turn the database, which is a local file, into a container with 
SQL Server running on it, um, which will allow us in later parts to deploy that to somewhere. So um, in the source folder, I've got under the files, I've got this folder called UMB data. Uh, that basically defines what we want to be in our database container. So I'm just going to move that entire folder to the root. Uh, and inside here, we basically have a Docker file, which defines our application and sets up things like our default password um, and a few uh, variables for paths and things like that and copies a few scripts across. These scripts are needed to basically, when the database starts up, um, it'll attach the database um, that we're going to provide to it. The second part is we need to actually copy the database from the local DB into this container folder. So I'm going to copy that from Umbraco uh, data, and it's these two files log and LDF, and I'm going to move them into UMB data. Okay, uh, once that's up and running, um, I need to make one final change which is my connection string so previously the application uh, used local data be local DB rather uh, and that's what's still defined in my application dot development JSON so I need to come in and replace that with uh, the what will be the um, the connection string for our new database server container uh, it's using the SA password that we defined in our Docker file. So that's all saved. Right, so now um, I can build my database image. So as you can see, there's no images on the server, on my Docker server currently. I'm going to run build, which will build our database image. It's nice and quick. It might take a bit longer in your machine if you don't already have these images uh, downloaded. I've already got them cached, so it took much less time uh, and the next thing I'm going to do uh, oh you, you, you can see our database images now over there and it's 1.6 gigs in size which is nice and small um, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, start our database container so that is going to be this docker command now I'm starting this container to use port 1400 rather than 1433 uh, simply because I um, already have SQL Server running on this machine. So um, now that my container is running and I can see it running on port 14, 1400, um, I can connect to it on SQL Server uh, using localhost 1400 and with the SA password that we defined. And if I connect, I should see my Embraco DB, which is the database that um, that we attached on there, but it's already been initialized because we ran the Embraco site and it created the um, it created the database uh, on local DB, but this has now restored this local DB database to SQL Server. So we can connect to this as if it's a full-on SQL Server now. Uh, great. Okay, uh, and the last thing to do is to make sure we haven't broken anything. So I'm going to run the site again. Uh, but this time, rather than connecting to the local DB, which doesn't exist anymore, we'll be connecting to the SQL Server. So if I run .NET, um, I can see, hopefully, the site should still work. Yep, everything all seems to be working. Fantastic. Right. I'm going to stop the site now. Uh, and in part three, we're going to take the website here and turn that website into um, into a container of its own. So the first thing to do, uh, there's a Docker file for the website itself. Uh, every, every container you create needs its own Docker file. So inside the files folder under UMP doc, that Docker file, I'm going to move it into the UMB doc folder. Uh, that just defines the process to compile and build it. I'm not going to go into detail over here, just as a quick video walkthrough. Um, so the next thing to do is when we run both the database and the website in Docker, we need to put them on the same network so that we can uh, connect to them using DNS. If I don't do that, 
uh, I can only connect to them using IP and since IP is dynamically assigned at runtime um, I have no way of knowing what the IP address is but so by putting them in a network so the first thing to do is I need to create a, a, a docker bridge network so I've created one called UMB net uh, and I'm going to put my database container into that so now if I run the command docker network inspect UMB net I'll see that um, I've got the IP addresses but I don't really need those because I've also got the name of my UMP data uh, container in it. Um, the next thing after that is when we run the website in the container um, it will need its own connection string so I'm going to create a um, copy of this development staging uh, development connection string and I'm going to rename it to staging JSON. So development will be local on my local um, website on, on my computer and that will always work. Um, I can make changes to that. This folder works in source control like any Impreco folder uh, but when I build the container image I'll be using the staging um, file and then in later versions we can look at how we can do a production one too. Um, so I've got there I'm going to replace the staging connection string with the one from the document. Now you can see it's referring to the server using the DNS because I will create uh, this website container in the same network. So uh, I can now build my container. So I'm going to go do that. And that will create and build my website container. Uh, this might take a minute. Okay, so uh, our website container, UMB doc, has now been created. Uh, it's nice and small. That contains everything we need for our website. So if I were to make changes and add views to this and rebuild the image, that would be included in it. So that's our deployment unit for the website. Um, okay, uh, I'm now going to run this container uh, and crucially, um, I'm going to make sure that the network is set to the same UMB net network so that's in the same network as our um, uh, as our um, database container. Okay, now that that's up and running, I can see two containers up and running. Now this is running on port 8000 because that's what I told it to run on. So port 8000 externally is connected to port 80 internally. Um, so if I now go to localhost 8000, we have our website. Now this is running entirely in a container. Um, there is an issue with the images because um, I believe uh, one of the packages isn't supported in, in Docker. I need to look into why that's happening, but uh, as a concept, we have built and run uh, two images which define our database and our website application uh, and we're now running them together in a network so they can communicate using DNS um, yeah and it's all running in docker locally and I can commit this to source control like I would do any Braco project um, thank you very much I hope you enjoyed this there's a second part coming where we will do uh, more interesting things so please tune in and come check it out thanks bye